Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Nagasa Galana from Sydney Academy. Today I'm going to teach Global Trends course. Uh, if you're new for this channel, please sub by subscribing and liking the video. And if you are already a member to Sydney Academy, please start by liking, commenting, and sharing the video. You can also follow this uh, academy through social media links that are just provided on this uh, academy. Uh, having said this, just directly I proceed to today's lesson. We are going to talk on lesson two, which is about understanding foreign policy and foreign policy behaviors. Uh, I will present this section and, and into lessons. We are going to talk about what foreign policy is. We will try to just uh, have some understanding about foreign policy and its objective in this uh, lesson. So uh, stay tuned, stay focused and just have notes. This will help you to come across with some new insights and important updates. What is foreign policy? And what are foreign policy behaviors? So I will see into lessons here. And the next lesson about foreign policy behaviors will be presented soon. But today we are going to focus on about foreign policy and its objectives. So what is foreign policy? Foreign policy refers to the set of objectives and instruments that a state adapts to guide its relation with the outside world. Uh, the state is used policies, foreign policies, so as to facilitate their relationship with the rest of the world. Uh, foreign policy is used to uh, facilitate the state's interactions, the state actions, with other states in the international system. In this aspect, states design their foreign policy, their objectives, and instruments they use so as to implement those policies and objectives. The objectives of foreign policy are in one way or another related to national interest. The main objectives that the foreign policy need to achieve in dealing with the rest of the state is in one way or another connected to the national interest of the country, what the country want to realize in its interaction with other states, or which the state considers as core in this uh, interaction with the rest of the state or with the rest of entities in the international politics. Uh, national interest is often considered as the objective of foreign policy of the state. It is said that the main emphasis and objective of foreign policy is to achieve and realize that national interest in just dealing with the rest of the state in the international system. This is the main reason why states frame and design foreign policies. This is the main reason why countries always strive to achieve their foreign policy objectives in the international relations. In this approach, states try to get their national interest, which lies beyond the border of the state. For instance, international trade is one of the areas in which the country want to achieve its foreign policy objectives or national interest. So states try to just achieve this. These objectives can be classified as long range, middle range, and short range. These are in terms of time, value, and demand that the state poses or attach to these objectives. The scope and content of foreign policy is often determined by the capability of the concerned state. The scope, the coverage of the foreign policy and the content that should be included in that foreign policy is mostly determined or based by the capacity or the state's power. It might be economic, political, military, or other sort of capabilities that the state possesses in its existence. This determines the developed countries' foreign policy objectives and the scope and content, and the foreign policy content and scope of developing country differs because 
their economic power, their political and military power determines what sort of foreign policy content and also the scope they have to apply to their foreign policy guides. This is what matters the most when framing the uh, foreign policy of the country. Based on the capability of set the foreign policy orientation and person, visions and instruments also varies. Capability matters the most in the frame of foreign policy and pursuing it in the international politics. This capability maintains how far the set can achieve that foreign policy objectives, how far the set can impose it is influence on other set in the international system to align themselves with their uh, national interests, objectives, and the principles. So this, how much the foreign policy or orientation is more of influencing preceptors, principles, visions, and instruments varies based on the capacity of that particular state. Uh, for general purpose, we have said something about foreign policy and then we try to define here what uh, foreign policy is. Foreign policy is something that a state would like to achieve in its external relation with others. It is a foreign uh, approach, or it's the approach that the country uses, the policy that the country uses, and it's dealing our actions in the international system in its external relation with the rest of the country or other states in the, that particular system. It involves general purposes and specific strategies as set employed to achieve or promote its national interests. What you should not forget here is the main driving force behind the formulation and application of foreign policy is national interest. Without national interest, there could be no foreign policy that the state pursues in the international relations. In this approach, the state has to define its foreign policy from the perspective of its national interests. National interests are those advantage, benefit that the state need to maintain in its dealing in the international system. So these general purposes that are just entrapped or that are framed in uh, foreign policy and specific strategies to implement those foreign policies are there to promote the national interests of the country. Without national interests, we cannot have foreign policy. There is no country without national interests. And similarly, there is no country without foreign policy. Each of them in the world have their own foreign policy and national interests, which may vary from state to state based on the capabilities and power of that state we have mentioned. Rochelle defines foreign policy as the set of priorities and preceptors established by national leaders to serve as guidelines for choosing among various courses of actions in specific situations in international affairs. So it is a set of priorities, a combination of priorities, and also precept, that means principles, standards that are established by leaders of the country which serve as guidelines for choosing among various courses of action in specific situation in the international affairs. This set of principles and ideology or priorities are those the state leaders design and decide which should be a given value for us to implement in their interaction with other states in the international affairs. So states are there to just pay attention to it because they want to achieve, so as to maintain and um, support their domestic movement, domestic politics, economics, uh, and the life of the people. So foreign policies are involved with general purposes, there are general purposes, priorities, of course, to be realized and achieved in it is implementation. There are several instruments that we use to implement this foreign policy in the dealing with other states. We are going to talk about them in the future lessons. 
But these priorities and goals that the state want to maintain in dealing with the other state is the core emphasis and attention of foreign policy of the country. That is why states are expected to be courageous and also vigilant in implementing that foreign policy. Uh, it also encompasses specific strategies and instruments that are economic and diplomatic tools that state employ to achieve their objectives. They use different instruments and strategies to help them achieve what the purpose that foreign policy objective want to maintain. These objectives, visions and goals is commonly referred as national interest. Objectives, visions, goals that we talk of are generally combined under the umbrella of national interest because it is the driving force behind uh, formulation and parsing of uh, foreign policy in the international affairs. Morbin Zhu, one of the uh, scholars in the field of international relations and international politics, proposed that the minimum goal of the state would like to achieve is survival. The minimum foreign policy objective an intention that a state is trying to achieve in this dealing with a state is survival. That means making sure of it is survival, independence, and it is a territorial integrity. So these are what states have to pay attention to and what they have to achieve as a result of just their dealing with other states. Every state should protect their physical, political, and cultural identities against any invasion by other state. Survive only what we say. This the physical, political, cultural identity of the state has to be protected and maintained to make sure the survival of the state. As a result, any state that is trying to achieve these foreign policy objectives has to pay attention to physical, political, and the cultural uh, system in addition, economic system has to be also paid attention to. So it should be preserved. The preservation of physical identity is equated with the maintenance of territorial integrity of the state. When you preserve the physical state uh, identity of the state, this is basically your maintaining the in territorial integrity of the state. So your sovereignty, the sovereignty of the state is made sure or maintained. So this is what uh, we can say physical identity or preservation of physical identity. The other preservation of political identity is equated with the preservation of existing political and economic systems. The state maintains political and economic system of the country when preserving political identity of the country. That is the ultimate purpose of the foreign policy and national interest. Columbus argued that the preservation of cultural identity is equated with ethnic, religious, and linguistic and historical norm of the people residing in the state. Here I want to add some uh, important factor that we have to consider or policymakers have to pay attention to when making foreign policy. There are two types of factors that they have to pay attention to. Number one is internal factor or domestic factor that they should consider to, to design and formulate the national or the, the, the foreign policy of the country. These are history, culture, language, economy, military power, and so and so. These are the determinant factors. When we talk of these uh, political, physical, and cultural identities, we have to pay attention to those internal and domestic factors that are very important and also pressing on the formulation of national interest as well as designing of foreign policy of the country. When we talk of cultural identity, then we are talking about ethnic, 
religious and linguistic and historical norms of the people that are residing in that country because this directly affects the success and the achievement of the foreign policy of the country. Foreign policy also involves specific instruments and tactics that are used to realize these objectives and goals. These are diplomatic talk or negotiation, economic instrument, propaganda, terrorism or sabotage, and use of force. These are some of the instruments that the state uses to implement its foreign policy objectives. We can categorize these instruments into two peaceful means or peaceful instruments such as diplomacy and economic instruments and non-peaceful instruments such as uh, terrorism and use of force. So these are some of the instrument ways that we use to implement the country's or our nation's uh, national interest. States use this kind of instruments to achieve what they need in the international affairs. Each instrument affects the behavior of other states and has an element of power. There is element of power in each of instruments that the state used to convince or influence other states in its dealing. So there is behaviors that the state uses to affect the other state. In diplomacy, states attempt to affect the behavior of other states through bargaining, through negotiation. A state uses negotiation as an instrument to influence the power of or the, the, the behavior of other states. This includes the capacity of uh, diplomats and instruments they employ to convince the state to agree to their terms, to agree to their need and interests. This involves less element of power as compared to other instruments. In diplomacy, there is no such huge power, but there are less power that we employ to use uh, to, 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 to convince states to agree to our terms and our behaviors. So this might be the ability of this, the diplomats, the foreign policy influence they make and the behavior they perceive in the international relations. Here states may manipulate current sick methods here, reward and threats, so as to induce agreement. In diplomacy, there are threats and uh, uh, reward is there are current um, stick strategies they use. So states are expected to just pay attention to this kind of strategy when implementing. If the state agree to the terms that is presented by another state, then there is a reward. But if the state refuses to agree to the terms and uh, standards presented by that country, then there is a threat of punishment. So these are, are used to induce agreement from the state that is the target state. Uh, security and survival of the state has always been conscious at the first priority. States give first priority, priority to security and survival of the state. K.J. Hollister, one of the um, scholars in the field of foreign policy and international relations, says that uh, categorizes the foreign policy objectives of the state into three short range, mid range, and long range objectives. And there are also some factors attached to these categorizations that we are going to see. Let us see. What are the foreign policy objectives? We have said Holsey divide, divided these foreign policy objectives into three, short range, middle range, and uh, long range. So what are they after dealing what the foreign policies are and then objectives are, and then we go to the classifications. Foreign policy uh, sets short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals and objectives will be achieved in proportion to the state's capability. We have said the state capability matters in the designing and achievement of foreign policy objectives and interests. So this foreign policy is um, 
divided into three as whole is divided or categorized it a short term middle term and long term this classification is basically based on three com combination of criteria there are three main criteria that are used to classify these foreign policy objectives into short term middle term and long term the first one is the value that is placed on the objectives the attention paid to it the words that is placed on that objective matters the second one is time the time element that is placed on that objective that means the time range that objective requires to achieve and the third is the kind of demand the objective imposes on other states in the international system what sort of demand what sort of influence it produces or places on other states in the international system based on this criteria the objectives can be classified as we have said core values and interests basically these interests are very crucial and the state commit their very existence and that must not be preserved or extended at all time all time states are ready to achieve and maintain this kind of interest their very existence is connected to these objectives mid-range goals which normally imposes demands on several other states or commitments to their achievement are serious and timely limit is also attached to them and universal long-range goals which seldom have different time limits so these are the categories the middle range are in between the long range and the short range objectives in practice leaders rarely play the highest value on long range goals and it's very much dependent on the capability and the ideology of the state so most of the time leaders do not pay much, much attention or serious attention to long range highest values that are as such given to long range because it takes time and a very long interest nature because the ideology and capability of the state matters in achievement of this long range goal let us see these uh, goals or objectives one after the other the first goal is core interests or values or simply we say short range objectives these short range objectives are goals for which most people are willing to make ultimate sacrifices most countries leaders and governments want to pay ultimate sacrifices for this long range short range objectives because they are very crucial for the existence of the other two short medium range and the long range they are usually stated in the form of basic principles of foreign policy and become article of faith that society accepts without any question this means they are very basic and lays the foundation for the state to operate in it is existence even such core interests are inviolable by the entire people residing in the state and much emphasis and great importance is attached to this foreign policy or these interests so these objectives should not be compromised they should not be shared or they should not be given um, less attention they are related to self-preservation of political and economic systems because we have, been, we have talked about political, economic and cultural identities. So it is all about self-preservation, which is equated with identity, cultural identity, physical identity and political identity. The people's culture, preservation of people's culture and it is identity. The territorial integrity of the state so these goals are very crucial and cannot be compromised and the states commit their very existence even they can go to war for the sake of attainment of this national interest other goals cannot be realized if the existence of the state and its political units are not ensured 
without this, without the insurance of these three states, three uh, basic uh, interests and goals, we cannot realize other goals such as middle goals and long range objectives. The exact definition of core value in any given country depends on the attitudes of those who make foreign policy. So the value that is placed on these kind of um, countries or objectives depends on the behaviors and attitudes of policymakers. They, the way they define matters the most in the attainment and definition of these core values. Otherwise, states are there to commit their existence and work for the achievement of these foreign policy objectives as far as it uh, requires. There is no such thing they uh, compromise. There is no such thing they just um, keep, keep looking backward. They are always very committed to the excess of sacrificing uh, their uh, military and using the ultimate power they have. Some governments place great values on controlling or defending neighboring countries and territories because their national interests may lie in that areas. This is because uh, this, uh, this, is, this area contains assets such as manpower and resources may exist, so they have to defend to build their capacity, or they believe that the major threat for their territorial integrity may come from that side. So they have to defend their neighboring country and countries such as the United States of America and Israel uses most of the time they are using that power. You see the United States of America fighting terrorism in some parts of the world, while the country is expected to maintain its national interests in that country. You see Israel just uh, fighting in different countries, in its neighboring countries. This is a major uh, step they use to just maintain their core national interests. They want to defend their territorial integrity because there is a lot of threat that is coming from that neighboring country. So when they make sure the security of the neighboring country, at the same time, they realize that they make the secu their security maintained and their territorial integrity achieved. This is what we call. They um, follow the extraterritoriality policy. Extraterritoriality is when the national interests and claims of a country is projected beyond the limits of its geographical boundary. When the country go beyond its geographical limit to defend its interests, then we say extraterritoriality. Extraterritoriality is when we as a state try to defend the neighboring country. So uh, a lot is there, much is there to defend, to make, to gain from. So that is what we can say. There is also the possibility of going beyond the state's territorial limit so as to gain. The most essential objective of any foreign policy is to ensure the sovereignty and independence of the home territory and to perpetuate a particular political, social, and economic system based on that territory. Existence matters, survival matters. Other things would come after survival is ensured. State has to maintain the security and then go for the maintenance of uh, other political, economic, and other issues, which are also important. So, having said this, let us proceed to look at about middle range objectives. Middle range objectives are drastically varies across time and across uh, states. There is a difference. There is a variety from time to time and also from uh, uh, state to state. Uh, as I have just talked, the variation is obviously due to the difference in the level of economic and technological progress, the military capability, and also the middle range of the objectives of the state. So this matters. The capability of basically and shortly the capacity of the state matters. And the need of the same matters. This is why we have to just say these are uh, vary. There is a variation between state to state. The state would like to achieve this. Uh, the, the, the state would like to achieve a course of actions that have the highest impact on the domestic, economic, and welfare needs and expectations of the country. So the state focus on that. This includes the attempts of the government to meet economic 
That means betterment demand and needs through the international action, international trade, international economic, and the social uh, interaction. Social welfare and economic development cannot be achieved through self-help. So interdependence is very important uh, because most states have only limited resources and administrative services and technical skills. So to reduce that gap, there should be interdependence. So middle range objectives cannot be achieved without the help of other states or without interdependence. Interdependence means that states uh, to satisfy its domestic needs and aspirations have to interact with other states in terms of trade, in terms of diplomacy, in terms of market, in terms of politics, they should be interdependent. So social and economic interests may be achieved as a result of this interdependence. So these uh, mid-range objectives are simply interdependent objectives. Trade for aid, access to communication facilities, source of supply, and for a market are for most necessary for increasing social welfare. So we cannot just get them without the help of other states. So these are some of the examples. The third are long range objectives. Long range objectives are goals, plans, dreams, and visions concerning the ultimate political or ideological organization of the international system and rules governing relation in the system. It is very long in its time scope, and also mostly these are visions and ambitions of the country. It takes several times, maybe millennia, takes maybe a 100 years century, or half of the, 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 the years, half of the, the century. The difference between mid-range and long-range goals relates not only to different time element in, in them, there is also significant difference in scope. There is, there is a difference between time as well as a scope between long range and the no no no, no between short range and the uh, mid range yeah between middle range and long range there is a time as well as scope differences in pursuing long range goals set normally make universal demands as the international level what sort of universal demand is they need to make or their purpose is no less than to reconstruct an entire international system according to a universally applicable plan or vision. The United States of America want to design the international system based on the new liberal philosophy and capitalistic project. On the other hand, countries like China, Russia, and North Korea, some of them, are trying to have the international system which is based on the communist philosophy and communist ideology. On the other hand, countries like Iran, Saudi Arabia, and United, United Arab Emirates want to reconstruct the world which embraces Islamic ideology, which is governed by Islamic law in the, in the future, which, is, which takes very long time. So, these are universal goals that the state pursues in achievement of this uh, international uh, goal. Such long-range visions and dreams may have international consequences as far as they are complemented by capabilities and powers. These all dreams and visions, ambitions, I talked. These dreams and visions and ambitions cannot be realized without power and capability of that country. Sometimes they remain unfulfilled because capacity matters. Otherwise, the long-range visions will not have any international significance beyond paper consumptions and rhetoric level. Other than talking and putting on the paper, sometimes they don't have any significance because they cannot be translated to reality. Every country has its own visions and ambitions proportional to its relative strengths and capabilities to be realized in the long run. Everyone, every person, for example, at a personal level, I do have long-range objective that means to become 
the Prime Minister of Ethiopia or any other person have a long-range objective to become one of the billionaires of the world or to be the leader or the president of or the secretary, the secretary of the United Nations at personal level. This is a long-range objective, but it consumes time and depends on your capability. It may remain unfulfilled. Generally, in today's lesson, we have seen about foreign policy, foreign policy objectives, and what are the necessary input that we have to uh, consider when setting foreign policy objectives. I hope you have got some uh, insight from this lecture. Uh, thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for your time. Like, subscribe, and uh, comment on this video, and hit the notification bell to get notified every time a new video arrives on this channel. Until next time, God bless you. Bye-bye.